Marketing Minute Podcast. My name is Jamie, and today I have with me Tyler from Email Marketing. Woo! Yay! <laughs> so today, yeah, Tyler's back. <laughs> Very important. Um, so today, obviously, we're going to talk about email marketing. We're going to start with the basics, and we're going to go a little more in-depth. So I'm not going to go like a full interview with you, so sure, don't be sure, scared. Yeah. So let's start with the basics. So what do you need to start your email marketing process? Let's start with there. The first thing you need is definitely just bare minimum the client's style. Their stylistic choices, whether it's fonts, font colors, mm -hmm. images they like to use, and first and foremost, their logo. That's the most important part because that's got to be in every email. Okay. From there, it, gives, it depends on the client. You can Some clients are a little more hands-on, if you will, they're very specific about all the stuff they like to see, whether oh. it's like giving you exact paragraphs to copy and paste in, uh, or on okay. the other end, there are some that just say, hey, we trust you, you're the creative here, make it look nice, and <laughs> God bless those people, I love them. <laughs> like a question there, like okay. parentheses, which one do you prefer better? The ones that tell you exactly the font, the size, the color code, or the ones that like, do your thing? The specific ones are nice because it's less work for me, but uh -huh. overall, I just add the creative ones are more fun. It's more fun to yeah. So like fifty-fifty, you'll yeah, play. Yeah, okay. Basically. I mean, yeah, that's fun. I mean, you have the creativity side that you can like go crazy, of course, following what they're, whatever <laughs> course, they're asking. Yeah, yeah. But also the ones that are like literally giving you on a platter. Hey, this is it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and the, and the creative ones are just more rewarding because it gives you more creative liberty to say, hey, maybe this time I'll try this, and if it works well. They'll yeah. say, hey, keep doing that. Yeah, like that. exactly. Yeah. And when you see the numbers going crazy, when your creative mm -hmm. side yeah. goes... It's the best. Ah, that's the best. <laughs> yes. So tell me, um, when a client tells you exactly what they want, do you have to change it? Do you have to like make it smaller? Because some clients probably give you tons of paragraphs. So you have to yeah. do it? Yeah, there's always tons of edits on the more specific mm -hmm. um, email clients. Okay. Some of them, funny enough, will even... Um, give you edits on something they gave you to completely copy and paste so okay. they're editing their own stuff but telling you to edit it it's, it's just kind of goofy <laughs> okay um and what about the process of email marketing let's say you already have the colors the brand the logo all that good stuff so what is your process so basically i'll take the template for the email campaign which at the bottom it'll have things like the social media links mm -hmm. it'll have links to their website their address and other things like that okay top is usually the header and the, the middle is where i really get to do my work i'll go into some sort of graphic design program whether that's canva or photoshop or something like that and i'll start piecing together what they want to see in the email and I like to get a general idea of what style I'm going for before I even think about what the subject is because you want it to look nice first and foremost. Of course. You were telling me that some of statics in the email is the banner and the signature because those things never change, well, not that often. So exactly what do you change in the content of the email and why? Like. Yeah, so like I said before, some clients are a little more picky, some are a little more open. The middle is really just dependent on what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So. Like I said before, once I got that color scheme down, once I got the general theme of things, I can start thinking about a subject line. Okay. And the subject line, you really, you really got to make it pop. We use what are called power words, things that'll really draw you in. Like save now, like you got to do this. It's urgent. <laughs> Click so, now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we'll think of those. Uh huh. And that should set the tone for the rest of the email. I'll know okay. exactly what sort of filler I need, what sort of images and imagery I'm trying to provoke in the okay. email, mm -hmm. just to you know draw the um, draw the viewer's attention in. Okay, and when you are writing that content, you're mm -hmm. telling me that you sometimes use images. So images versus co like actual text, which one works better, in your opinion? Images, images, really? images, images, images. Yeah, because people don't want to see a wall of text. Yeah, they don't. They don't want it to look like. Just like a regular email you get from a co a coworker or colleague yeah. or something like that. It's yeah. gonna it's gonna pop like just like the subject line. It has to pop. It has to draw your attention in. Okay. Because drawing in that attention will get people first and foremost to open the email, yeah, which is su super important. <laughs> and then also once they have the email open, you mm -hmm. want them to click through. It's not just for them to look at it and go, oh, that's nice, and then close out. You're, exactly. You're, it's you want them to click through those calls to action, okay. you know, like the big like buy now or click here for more information. You really want those to stand out. So right. images, big, bold font. Okay. You just, yeah. To live it simple. Leave okay. It simple. And what about yeah. in images, it's okay to use GIFs? 
Typically, no. No? Oh. <laughs> At least, uh, well, I try not to because the last thing you want, one of the most important things you want to not do is make it look like spam. Oh, yeah. So when you... <laughs> <laughs> When you get emails that have weird font choices like Comic Sans or like our, their color scheme is toxic Don't green and neon pink, you know, you're, you're like, what is it? Oh, there's also a wall of text and some cyan blue and it's all mixing together in this weird way and there's flashy images. Yeah. It just screams like, Spam. oh, this is like a scam. Someone's trying to steal my credit card info. Yeah, it's true. Like, or, or a virus or a bug exactly, into the, the computer virus too, language. Yeah. Or even just all those phishing scams. It's yeah, just, yeah, that's her. Okay, that makes sense. So you want, so. It, you want it to pop, but you want it to... Seem reasonable, I guess. You want okay. to yeah, seem no, reliable. It, make, it makes sense because mm -hmm. if I'm opening an email and I see the, the color scheme and all the like the, all the shades, I'm gonna be like, okay, no, and run the <laughs> the antivirus just in case. Mm -hmm. um, so my next question for you will be, what is the difference between sending a Gmail or well, not using no sending the Gmail, using Gmail or Hotmail? versus what you actually do like is everybody able to do it just open a gmail account and go no yeah <laughs> no, first and foremost no what, okay what we do is we use programs like mail styler or send blaster and mm -hmm. um mailchimp okay and that's where we'll create and put together the email from the subject line to some of the the background info and the html text you need to show up in case images aren't coming up okay so there's a lot of that work that goes into it beforehand it's not just logging into Google and oh, sending an email yeah. real quickly. Okay, because I've heard that, uh, oh, I can do email marketing, it's so easy, just open a Gmail account and just send it to everybody, but no. Yeah, I would, <laughs> I would say not, especially when you're sending to, I have, a, I have an email sending right now to 40,000 people. Wow. I don't think you want to uh, be sending that by hand individually. All right, no. here's this address, here's this address, Copy just plug it in, yeah. So yeah. these programs that we use, and there's tons of them, mm -hmm. It's just, it's so important to get it out to all those people accurately and timely. Okay. So I have a question now that you're mentioning that 40,000 people in that email mm -hmm. list. So would you say it's okay to purchase a list to get into that number or is more organic is going to work the best? Organic is always most important because that's what's going to really bump up your click through rates and your open rates, which are the most important part of email marketing. Okay. If you're, if you buy some shady list off of whoever uh -huh. most of those emails might not exist mm -hmm. they might be owned by bots it's and true. or just people who won't open it so really organic is best and if you're starting out sure if you can purchase a list from somewhere reputable mm -hmm. then that's all right to get your foot in the door but for the most part you really want to stick to organic okay okay and you can do that in all the programs that you mentioned before. You cannot do that in Gmail. Exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so now that you mentioned the open rate versus the click-through rate, talk to me about that. Like, what is the main difference? Why it's so important? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, let's take, for example, this uh, 40,000. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this <laughs> it's okay. 40,000 email list uh -huh. that I'm sending out. We want to be able to analyze that afterwards. Once it's all sent out, that's another part of why you can't use Gmail. Once mm -hmm. the emails are all sent out, we have to run through the analytics and see what's happening there once the emails are sent. Okay, the numbers. And see what works, the numbers, yeah. <laughs> and so we comb through those numbers and try and see what's working, what isn't working. One mm -hmm. of the biggest indicators is the open rate. Okay. And depending on your industry, sometimes you want an open rate of 10%, sometimes you want it up to 30 and 40. You know, anything above 50 and 60 is amazing, but that doesn't happen as often as okay. everyone would like. Mm -hmm. And the click-through rate is what happens once they open the email, we want to see how many people are actually going through. Oh, okay. And okay. like taking our calls to action, you know, they, we want them to hit that buy button so it takes them to the website where they will buy or at least be there to browse the, exactly. uh, the selection. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is a good number or a good rate for the click-through rate? The click-through rate... Or is it depending uh, on, on the It client? depends on the okay. business, but typically it's between two to six percent depending on what industry okay. it might seem small but it's think of how many times you've actually clicked through on a, so, on a email marketing let's list not go there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> i mean sometimes it's if the of course the subject line is catchy mm -hmm. 
it's amazing because okay i'm gonna go there into the email but then if i see the text like you were saying mm -hmm. i'm like oh my god no i don't have time for this so it, it depends and also what do i need in the moment so mm -hmm. we have to be really current with whatever is happening right yeah exactly and also it what it does having both of these analytics for us is it keeps me honest i can't just think of a really good subject it's line true. and say all right i'll i'll skimp out on the uh, mm -hmm. the content just leave it as is no yeah. so I have to make sure the subject line is catchy. You have to make sure the visuals are good and the text is calling people to okay. the to the client site. Okay, so you're basically mentioning all the great practices that we have to follow. Anything mm -hmm. else that you want to add besides all of that? The subject line, the the of course to have the right website when people click to it because I've seen that before, so that's a big fail. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that is not good. <laughs> that's not good. So tell me about good practices and then let's jump out into the funny part with the fails. Good practices. Mm -hmm. uh, just, I guess basically what I've been describing, you just you always take your creative liberty when you feel it's appropriate, but really you want to satisfy the client because sometimes the client just, they want what they want and they like the rates they get, so they don't really want change. So yeah, the, that's true. The first and foremost, yeah, just, just trust the client okay. and where you can try to influence them a little bit, you take some creative direction, find a little know. spice to their, to <laughs> yeah. their email marketing. Okay. And yeah, that's, that's, that's the biggest thing, really. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Okay, now let's tell me about the good stuff, haha, <laughs> the fails. So besides not using <laughs> the right landing page, what else have you seen in your experience that are like, no, that's not working? Um, just really it's bad aesthetics is the, is the, really? the biggest blunder. You Oof. just, some people, they like the color scheme they chose and even though it might not work, especially for a graphic design team, maybe yeah. just like when it's translated to other things for their marketing, it's... It doesn't work as well as it should, and some 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 emails just end up looking like spam, and they say, "Hey, that's the way I like it," and you just well, you just gotta live with it. That's, well, that's sometimes a client choice. Sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah. but, um, who knows? They may be right. But sometimes they're right, but sometimes we come in and say, "Hey, this is not working. Let's just change it a little bit." Mm -hmm. um, what about the um, errors? Like that's a big fail, right? To not run it through like Grammarly or any other. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> thankfully I've never I've never done it. Whew. Grammatical errors are the are the quickest way to lose any sort of credibility when you're doing these exactly. email marketing campaigns. Like if I if I open up an email and the first line, like even the subject line has a, a grammatical error, I'm like, all right, no, that's yeah, that's not that's even not worth not my time if I didn't put the effort in yeah. to do that. So yeah. Even simple stuff too, for getting an apostrophe, misspelling, mm. like the, you know, T A T E H. Yeah, just, T A just. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> duh. Yeah, no, you can't be doing any of that. That's a, that's another huge mistake you gotta okay. watch out for. And in your personal opinion, like you opening an email, mm -hmm. knowing what you have to go through in the entire email marketing process, what are some things that makes you open an email marketing from a company? On the subject line, really. I'm a sucker for the personalized one where it's like, oh, you need really? to do this, this will help you out, especially when you've signed up for niche things, whether you sign up for like fashion or video games okay. or any other sort of thing. When those companies really cater to their audience, it's super good to open up. Okay. And then once you're in there, like I said before, aesthetics, it's got to look nice, it's got to look okay. good, it's got to draw my eye in, okay. and it's got to, it has to make me want to click through to okay. the website. So visually appealing, appealing works for you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, sometimes it's traps. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes I receive an email and I get the um, like four two points and the subject line, oh, you know, okay. like yeah. I respond to the email and I'm like, did I respond to this email? This is not. <laughs> so when I go in, it's like a crap line. Like, okay, they got me. Now, that's another one of those like power subject lines. Yeah, the, it the, works on me. The anticipation, yeah, the dot dot dot. Yeah, it's just oh god. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yes, and also kind of like season. So Halloween or anything spooky, yeah. I'm on it. Like yeah, okay, yeah, you got seasons me. are another big one. That's that's super important for email marketing okay, as okay. a whole. Yeah, it's when Christmas comes around. Like, are you kidding me? You have to talk about it. You gotta, yes. you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have sell to, that. Yeah, go there. Okay, go deep. Okay, and uh, what is your favorite season? Like, what season makes you open the email the most? Probably winter, because you know you're looking for gifts for people. You're it's true. you're happy that it's finally Christmas. You're you're excited to see your family and everything again. It's so yeah, winter is definitely I think okay. the, the easiest one. Okay. One of my favorites. That's Summer's good too. Summer's another good one. But yeah, really, but it's kind of like bombarded with summer. But I don't know. Yeah, sometimes they go a little. They're a little overzealous with yeah. the summer marketing. Summer. This is the best summer ever. I promise. It's not. It's like a hundred degrees <laughs> outside. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh my god. Well thank you so much Harry, for your time. Thank you, um, for you guys, me. of course. You guys, if you wanna ask any questions to Tyler, please let us let us know in the comments below, DM us, chat us, whatever. You know the channels, you know the drill. So I'll see you in the next time. Bye. See ya.